as we say, anatomy is the science and it's mostly descriptive in nature. There are some terms you will encounter during your study. You have to know them, understand them, and be able to use them properly in order to communicate with others. Before knowing these terms, there are two important concepts we have to know. The first one is the anatomical position. When describing a structure, we will assume that the body is erect, upper limbs by the sides, the face and the palms of the hand are directed forward. So this is the anatomical position. So when you are describing a structure, we will assume that the body is lying in this position. Okay. The second important concept is the planes. The planes are imaginary lines that helps us in describing the body. There are three planes we use in anatomy. We will use this folder to illustrate the lines. The first plane is the horizontal or, or the transverse plane. This plane transects the body like this and divides the body into upper and lower half. So this is the transverse or horizontal plane. The second plane is the sagittal plane. The sagittal plane transects the body into equal left and right half. Goes like this. This is the right half and this is the left half. Okay? The third plane is the coronal plane. The coronal plane transects the body like this into anterior half and a posterior half. So those are the three planes we will use in the descriptive purposes in anatomy. So regarding the terms that you will see in your studies are terms of position. The first two terms are the medial and lateral. Medial and lateral describe the position of the structure from the midline. So when the structure is near to the midline, we say it is medial. And if it is away from the midline, it is called lateral. For example, this bone, which is the clavicle, has got two ends. This end is near to the midline. It's called the medial end of the clavicle. And this end is away from the midline. So this is the lateral end of the clavicle. Another example, in the forearm, this area, we have got two bones, this one and this one. This one is near to the midline, it is the medial one. And this one is away from the midline, so it is the lateral one. I hope it is clear now. The other two, the other terms is anterior and posterior. So for example, this is the anterior surface of the body, anterior surface of my body, and of course the posterior surface of the body anterior and posterior okay other synonyms of anterior and posterior words that have got the same meaning this surface is called ventral anterior or ventral the posterior is also called the dorsal so this is the anterior surface of this bone and this is the posterior surface of this bone okay in the hand 
this the anterior surface is also called the palmar surface so this is the anterior surface or the palmar surface of the hand and this is the dorsal surface of the hand so this is the palmar this is the dorsal this is the anterior or ventral and this is the posterior or dorsal all right now as we say there are also the terms superior high up and inferior low down superior and inferior words that has got the same meaning that have got the same meaning are cephalic high up caudal low down all right so now let's proceed with another terms uh, there is a term that denotes the distance from the root of the structure the two terms are proximal and distal so if this is the start of this limb and we have got this point which is near to the root it is proximal while this point away this is distal so this is this is the root proximal and distal okay so proximal low distance from the from the root and distal greater distance from the root okay other two terms are superficial and deep our reference point is the surface of the body a superficial structure is lying near to the surface of the body while a deep while a deep is away from the surface of the body so superficial structure is near to the surface and a deep is away from the surface another two terms are internal and external internal structure is heading toward the center of the body while external it's, it heads away from the center of the body internal and external usually used in describing the arteries so when an artery branch into two one heading to the center is called the internal branch and one away from the center it's called the external branch okay another terms of position that we will use if the two points you are described you are describing lying on the same side of the body they are called ipsilateral so my right arm and my right ear are ipsilateral they are all in the right side ipsilateral if you are describing two points each in one side of the body we call them contralateral contralateral so my left ear and my right arm this one in the left side and this one in the right side so they are contralateral all right another two terms of position are supine position and prone position when the body is lying on his back and his face upward this is the supine position so lying on your back and your face is upward this is the supine if you are lying with your face downward this is the prone position we will see them in the cadavers okay okay uh, now all the terms that I've said are terms of position okay we say medial and lateral superior and inferior anterior and posterior ventral and dorsal cephalic and caudal all of those are terms of position there are other sets of words describing the movement okay the movement in the body occurs at the joints when two bones meet this is a joint the joint usually permit movement so 
This is the shoulder joint. This is the elbow joint. This is the wrist joint. And they are joints in the lower limb. For example, this is the hip joint. This is my knee joint. And lower down, this is my ankle joint. Don't worry, you will see this joint in details later. But what I want to say is that movements occur at joints. Okay. Now, terms that describes movement are as follows. We are talking about my elbow. This movement is called this movement is called flexion. When I approximate the two surfaces to each other, this is called flexion. And when I straight the joint, this is called extension. Let's see it from another view. This movement in my elbow, flexion, approximating the two surfaces. And when I straight them, this is extension. Okay? The other set of movement is like this. When I move my arm away from my body, this is abduction. Abduction. A B duction. Abduction. And when I pull it toward the side of my body, this is adduction. So abduction. Adduction. The other set of movement is rotation. Rotation. Rotation occurs around the long axis of the structure. So this is my, my arm. This is my arm. If I move it like this, this is internal rotation of my humerus. And this is external rotation. Internal rotation. External rotation, also called medial rotation toward the center and lateral rotation away from the center. Okay? When we combine those movements, so this is flexion of the shoulder, abduction, extension, adduction. This rotatory movement is called circumduction. So circumduction is a combined combination of flexion, abduction, extension, and adduction. All right? There are uh, special phrases for the movement of the forearms. Uh, for example, this is the anatomical position. When I move the palm, the palm of my hand, to face medially, this is normal internal rotation. So this is the anatomical position. But if I move the palm of the hand to be facing posteriorly, like this, this is pronation, pronation. The palm of the hand faces posteriorly. And when I reverse it to the anatomical position, this is supination. So this is pronation, this is supination. Pronation, supination, okay? This is, again, pronation, supination, okay? All right. There are special movement also in the sole of the foot. We will see it in a minute. Now let's see the movement in the lower limb. As we said, movement occur in the, in the joints. So this is the hip joint. This is my hip joint. This is the knee joint. This is my knee joint. And this is the ankle joint. This is my ankle joint, okay? So let's start with the knee because it's the easiest. Now I am flexing my knee. This is knee flexion. And this is knee extension. When I approximate the two surfaces, flexion. And when I straighten them, this is extension. Again, this is knee 
flexion, knee extension. Again, movement in the hip. This is hip flexion. This is hip extension. Okay. Okay. This is hip flexion. This is hip extension. Okay. Movement in the ankle joint. This is this is the anatomical position, right? This is called plantar flexion. And the opposite is dorsal flexion. Plantar flexion, dorsal flexion, okay? If I move my ankle, if, my, if I move my foot, so the sole of the foot faces medially, like this, this is inversion, inversion. The sole of the foot faces medially. And the opposite is eversion. Eversion. The sole of the foot faces outward. Eversion, inversion. Dorsal flexion, plantar flexion. Knee flexion, knee extension. Hip flexion, hip extension. 